to be honest, sir, this is uh, probably my fifth interview with you. But today, what was, let's say, most important and most difficult. Yeah, see, uh, that I was, means you're making money now, sir. Is it hard to... No, it's just that I'm busy and busy the media the media is not my main concern. Is it fair to say that you are a fireman uh, on waiting? <laughs> let's say you are an advisor, but the White House is not paying you. Well, I don't need any money from the White House. I'm happy to help the, the President or the Secretary of State any time they ask. Sir, is it fair to say that Bosnia is Holbrook's legacy? Is Bosnia as far as Richard Holbrook can get, or your days are yet to come? Well, I don't think there's anything I'll do in my life that will be any more important than what's described in this book, Dayton, Stopping a War. Talking about Dayton again, uh, tell me your impression about that days uh, when uh, military offensive was in Bosnia. Some people think that you uh, stopped Izetbegovic or you persuade him to stop military action in Krajina and also Banja Luka. Well, Izetbegovic didn't clear. have any military action in Krajina. That was Kra Tuchman. Okay. There was no, there was no Bosnian force in Krajina. And as for Western Bosnia, as I recount in the book, uh, I did recommend to Izabegovic and Tudjman that they not take Banja Luka, but I begged them to take Prigador, Sansky Must, Bosansky Nova, and, and, um, and the other towns of that area. And I was very upset that Prigador and Bosansky Nova did not, did not fall to the Federation forces. And that was not because of the United States. It was because of a friction that had grown up between the Croat and the Muslim forces in Western Bosnia. But of course, you were afraid, uh, according to Galbraith, you were afraid to have Tujman taking Banja Luka. Of course. I didn't think that it was in the interests of peace for Banja Luka to fall, because it would have created 200,000 more refugees. There would have been a lot of killing, a lot of raping, a lot of destruction. And at the end, in any negotiation, Banja Luka would have returned to the Serbs. As it is, I think that history has proved that that was correct. Why? Because if Banja Luka had fallen in the offensive, you wouldn't have Dodik and Plopsic today. You would have a, you would not have had the, people would have been too angry and too inflamed to create a moderate Serbska leadership. Then is it fair to say that you didn't want to see Serbs uh, losing, Serbs as a loser? No, that's not true. I just said a minute ago that I wanted them to take all of the other territory, but not, not Banja Luka? Luka. Because Banja Luka was inevitably going to be the largest Serb city in, in uh, the Serb portion of Bosnia. And that was, unless you were out going to go out free and, and free the whole country, which was a military operation that the Western Alliance was not prepared to do, I happened to think it was the right thing to do. And I wrote that. But once that was impossible, you had to have a negotiated settlement, you had to have a Serb portion of Bosnia, this was the right route to go. And now we want to encourage the moderates, Plavsic, Dodik, and the other moderates. They should be encouraged. And the most important thing is for President of Srpska, Plavsic, Prime Minister Dodik, to have direct relations with Prime Minister Silajdic and with President Izabegovic and Zubak and the others. It's time for the Serbs and the Muslims and the Croats to work together economically, socially, culturally again. They can do it. The SDS party in Pali is, the, is, is opposed to this still, but they are declining. And the faster they decline, the better. We have a great opportunity here for Bosnia to show the world that they have emerged from their long nightmare and they're on the way to the future. You've heard about Zobak and... He's formed a new party. Yes. Do you believe that he's new Dodik among Croats or who would be a Bosnian? I, I don't know, but I'm, I, I know President Zubak very well. I like him. I think he's a fine man. He's always told me he's committed to making the process work and I wish him well, but I can't judge whether... I don't want to compare him to Dodik. I know Zubak much better than Dodik. I've only met Dodik uh, a couple of times. Zubak was with us in Dayton. He was a very key figure at Dayton. Even though I don't want to single this out, uh, but others have the impression that you were 
charmed by Milosevic. No, you? I don't understand this question of charm by Milosevic. I, I use the word charm in the book in an ironic sense. And I say very clearly in the book that Milosevic could switch from charm to brutality instantly, just like that, that it was a tactic. And I describe it. And at one point, I quote Secretary of State Christopher as saying, watching Milosevic turn on the charm, that if he had been born in the United States, he would have made a successful politician in the US. But I wasn't charmed by Milosevic. I, my job was not to be charmed, but to try to end the war. Do you believe that he would be that generous and charming if he were negotiating Serbian land, during, uh, drawing a map under Kosovo or Montenegro's mountain? I can't say. He, it's not a question of charm. When we got down to the maps, there was no charm in the room. It was absolutely brutal argument. And I make it clear. But when he gets a visiting delegation, he can turn on the charm. That doesn't in any way, shape, or form suggest that I was charmed by him. I'd like to, if you allow me, to talk about your private life. Just two questions. Uh, they say behind a successful man is a woman. In the very same time, when you were ready to say yes to Katie Morton, you said yes to NATO airstrikes in Bosnia. Yes. How much stronger are you with Katie? She apparently had an important role in that. Well, yes. I couldn't have done the negotiations without her. She was the... Uh, she, you know, she was always there to support me, and because she's born in Hungary and she's Central European, she has a special feeling for this area. And she also is a very, as chairman of the Committee to Protect Journalists, she played a big role in arguing for press freedom uh, in Bosnia, something that you and Vera, I think, uh, symbolize. So I, I couldn't do it without Kati. I had a chance to meet your mother. Is <laughs> she the most influential person is in your life, <laughs> having in mind that? <laughs> A surprising number of men say so about this, or who would be the most influential person in your life? Well, there are a lot of influential persons. My father, who died but gave me the sense for public service and intellectual curiosity, and my mother, who has a great zest for life, as you know, and, and Kati, and, and then people I worked with in the government. In conclusion, Ambassador Holbrook, you affected the destiny of millions of souls in the Balkans. Do you feel godlike? No, godlike? God, no. I can't even get away from you. <laughs> hey. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you so much. Godlike, godlike. Poštovani gledalci, bio je to Ambassador Richard Holbrook za programe Televizije Bosne i Hercegovine. U Njujorku razgovarala Enver Seligunić.